Hi everybody, Simon here. Welcome to a cold Monday lunchtime in the UK. Coyote and it's getting colder. So, today, this is a ladyboy love story. Um, why? So a couple of days ago, I put a couple of videos up that were a tester. You uh, probably seen them. There was a go-go uh, video with music, pictures of go-go girls, and then I did a ladyboy one. This was a test to see uh, if my subscribers were interested in that subject. And as it turned out, the ladyboy video got almost twice as many views as the go-go one. Over two and a half thousand, in fact. A lot of thumbs down, thumbs down, but I think that's male ego, maybe. So, yeah, lady boys. Now, last night I also got involved with a live stream. Um, I met a couple of new YouTube creators. Uh, I'll talk about those a bit later. I'm also going to mention at the end of this story uh, YouTube have demonetized one of my videos. So that's new to me. So we'll talk about that a bit later as well. But yeah, I thought, right, there's obviously a demand for information on ladyboys or stories. So this one I've had for a while in the bag. It's about a friend of mine who's a professional driver. I've known for many years. He's about 10 years older than myself. And um, so his story, I've chatted to him. He's said yep yeah, you can do this and he's given me the names change the names <laughs> which is quite funny strange names he's chosen as well so he's called George in this story now 20 years ago George went to Thailand for the first time two-week holiday um, didn't get the bug wasn't really that fussed with it and came back now George hasn't been married but quite a few girlfriends over the years um, and that trip didn't seem to affect him anyway he thought it was a lovely country and and that was it but he did only go Bangkok and I think it was uh, somewhere near Phuket around that area so several years passed and for some reason George sort of slowed down on the girlfriends um, and just put his head down and worked a lot and uh, saved money and something seemed to change in his life um, over the last 10 years or so so five years ago uh, another and again there's another friend of mine was going to Thailand uh, on his own and he said to George look I've got a month booked in Thailand I don't really want to go alone do you fancy a trip and George said, yeah, why not? I haven't had a holiday for a few years. And uh, off they went. And this is five years ago. Landed in Thailand. They spent a few days in Bangkok. Then they went down to Pattaya. Pattaya. However you pronounce it. A couple of days into that, um, my other friend who took George... Uh, had a problem in the UK, had to come home sadly, uh, sort something out. Left George on his own in Patea. Now um, George, he just thought, well I've got a month booked so I'm just going to have the holiday. And he wasn't really fussed about the girls and things, and uh, but enjoyed having a drink and meeting people. He found himself in Walking Street at about half nine in the evening. And he had a few drinks, he was a little bit tipsy. Um, he'd mix his drinks a little bit in the evening. And he was feeling a bit tired. So he started wandering back to his hotel early. Uh, he got about a quarter of the way along Beach Road. The hotel he was staying at was the Hard Rock Hotel, Hard Rock Cafe Hotel, about halfway along Beach Road. So anyway, about a quarter of the way along, he was feeling a bit tired and there was a one of these little monuments with a round concrete seat um, going around it and he sat down there next to the beach looking at the sea and he nodded off fell asleep about 10 o'clock at night 
Anyway, about, oh, I don't know, half an hour, he wasn't sure of time, but maybe half an hour, an hour later, he woke up, um, found his head leaning on a girl. Now, this startled him a bit, apparently. He's uh, sort of a bit shocked, you know, woke up and you're leaning against someone. <laughs> can imagine. And this girl turned out to be um, a ladyboy. So, they started talking. Um, and George didn't know, maybe he'd mixed wrong drinks or something while he was sleepy. But yeah, they got chatting. So they sat there and they chatted for a few hours. <laughs> then they decided to take a walk along the beach and uh, chat him more and more. Um, quite a few hours passed. And um, then Ladyboy said goodbye, was heading off to a room that she shared. Um, and uh, George went off back to the hotel. Now this lady boy, George is called Bambi. I don't know why, Bambi. Bambi had been telling him about um, some of the ups and downs she's had in her life um, and some of the psychological things she's going through. And George had been a good ear. George had also told her some of his life maybe. And they arranged to meet up the next morning and have a breakfast and a chat. Now, this lady boy, Bambi, uh, came from a village somewhere near a place called Pai, or P Pai, I think it was, he said. From a young age, um, being born in, as a boy, from about the age of 14, 15, had, uh, had the desire, the feelings, the to change, um, but her family were not impressed, not with it, not supportive in any way whatsoever. It's a very small village that she lived in, a uh, farming village. I think the parents actually were doing something to do with the building trade, but she um, she was sort of outcast, and she left home at uh, 15 years old, um, went off to Bangkok and various places, working different jobs, um, and had the call in and became a lady boy. Um, a year or so into these working, she raised enough money and had um, breast implants, and that's the only operation that Bambi had had ever. Um, made her, I don't know, maybe feel better or whatever. I don't don't understand the the psychology behind it. All I'm she, she went through the operation um, and after that found work was hard. She ended up in Patea and tried getting into some of the shows and things and couldn't get in. She wasn't a good enough dancer. She wasn't quite good enough looking maybe. And she found herself on the streets um, doing what a lot of people do in Thailand, uh, raising money any way you can. And tried going home and when she went home the parents were sort of surprised, shocked, didn't uh, open their arms and welcome her back. In fact they sort of pushed her away and said we you know we don't want to know and must have been horrible for her, horrible. She went back to Patea and it was at this point a few weeks after she'd got back that the encounter with George. Now um, he'd gone back to the hotel, had a good night's sleep in the morning, a little bit confused with his feelings. Um, he found himself uh, attracted to Bambi, that uh, even knowing that she was a lady boy, he couldn't work out what he was feeling. But he went and they met up and had breakfast and they spent the day uh, together talking about their lives and everything and they, they clicked. George was really not sure. Anyway, cutting the short the story a little bit shorter, they tried um now would you call it vertical aerobics with a lady boy horizon? They they tried different things out and they spent a week together. 
Um, and George just didn't know, couldn't work out his feelings, didn't know his own sexuality, just couldn't work it out. But they hit it off so well. Um, he then said, look, I've got a, I'm going off to Bangkok for a week and then I'm off home. So they exchanged emails, phone numbers and things like that. And he went off to Bangkok, spent a week around Bangkok, traveling a bit, really confused with what happened. Didn't understand everything. Um, jumped on a plane, came home. This is five years ago. His friends all sorted, everything's fine. He gets home, didn't do much for the first week, just totally confused in life. But then he found himself more and more being drawn to Bambi. Um, and they started talking, email, phone calls. And after another three weeks or so, George seemed to come to the conclusion or realise that he really had fallen for Bambi. Um, the stigma and everything was in his mind. He wasn't sure about people. But he actually talked. He actually talked to myself at this time and uh, another person. And both of us sort of said, well, you, you've just got to follow your heart. You've got to, you know, be careful, obviously, going to Thailand financially, all the pitfalls, you know all this, you've seen, read the books and seen everything. You've just got to be a bit careful, but go and try and explore some avenue, spend some time there. Um, so he did, he got back on a plane, crossed, found Bambi. Um, they came out of Patea and went on a couple of week holiday wandering around Thailand. And he, George, fell in love totally fell so they sat down and they talked about well what should we do what can we do we don't this is new to both of them uh, Bambi had never really had a long-term relationship um, so they thought well George wanted to meet the parents and see what the village was like where Bambi came from wanted to see if the parents would accept him and Bambi if they went there so they did, they got on a bus, went up to, I think it was Pai. And you can imagine, they got a taxi to Bambi's house, the family were there and the taxi turns up and out gets a Farang, foreigner, with their son, was son, now daughter, Bambi. Um, a bit shocked I can imagine, but they opened the door to George and went in couple of days they spent there they seemed to iron everything out with the family the family sort of wasn't sure they didn't want to lose face in the village I don't understand again the psychology behind all somebody turning changing to a lady boy and the home village how they respond but everything seemed to be getting better Bambi was feeling great that the family was sort of opening the arms a bit um, and George suggested that he wanted to take some time out from the UK, he was coming up to retirement soon, that maybe they could spend some time with the family. Um, and the family sort of said, well, don't know about staying here. And George said, well, have you got a little bit of land next door that I could buy? Maybe we'll build a really small little house and we'll, for Bambi, and see how things go. And the family, yeah, that sounds good, we're happy with that. So, George bought a really small piece of land off the family and the family were in the trade so very cheap little one bedroom Thai style house went up in six weeks George back to the UK had to come back left Bambi there so Bambi looked after the building um, George wrapped up his work here in the UK put all his money away squirreled it away and put everything in place that uh, it was all safe rented his house out and off he went and I remember talking to him just before he went and he was like I don't know what I'm doing but I'm really happy I'm gonna go and try life with a lady boy and he got on the plane over he went straight to the village the house was uh, about a week later was finished and livable and they uh, moved into it now that is four years ago 
and George is still in that house, in the village, with Bambi, still happy, still sending me emails, um, and he's staying there. <laughs> he's not coming back. <laughs> he's got his house rented out, he's got an income, um, he's got himself a retirement visa now, because he's I think 65, and he's just staying there. And um, I don't know the aspects of if he's going to get married, if you can marry a lady boy. Not sure the laws on that, but he's still there. He's happy, having a great time. And the village have accepted Bambi. The family have accepted her now and George. Everything's going really well. Happy ending, lady boy, love story. There you go, they do exist. He's gonna keep e emailing me. I'll see him next year. I'm gonna go up to the village and uh, meet Bambi. And maybe stay somewhere near the house. So that'll be interesting. Do some videos on that. And he's gonna keep me updated. And hopefully he likes this video. So there you go. Small, short, lady boy love story. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed that. Right, last night, uh, Sunday evening, I went on I was watching snooker, boring match, came off, put YouTube on. Now, this one guy I am um, talking about is the name of Pung Pui Farang. Now, I went on his YouTube, he's a, I think he's an Australian guy, he goes to Thailand three or four times a year and does vlogs about his trips. I went onto his channel maybe six months ago, watched a couple of videos, wasn't that fussed with him, um, and I unsubscribed being honest. Last night I suddenly saw that he was doing a live um, video. And this is something I was thinking of doing some live uh, question and answers. So I thought I'll just go and have a nosy and we'll see what it's all about. Within a few minutes of being on there, um, his honesty and history and the subscribers on there, people talking, some of them are my subscribers, some of you are watching me now. I got involved and it's definitely an over 18s video. I was shocked, I was surprised, I was learning things. The language was a bit, you know, go watch it a bit. But some of the stuff coming out of the channel, I was amazed. I really enjoyed the one hour, I think it was, long live stream uh, and I was shocked and I was amazed and it was a brilliant live stream. Uh, Pung Pui Farang, very honest, different style, some of you will love him, some of you won't, but I really really enjoyed the, um, the stream and a lot of it was to do with Lady Boys. I won't spoil it, at the end of this video there'll be a, a link come up there probably with this video from last night, the live stream. If you've got the time and the patience, <coughs> the more you watch it, the better it gets. Go and have a look. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is his connection with Lady Boys. Um, so this Lady Boys story I've just done, if you've got any questions about Lady Boys or um, that scene, what I suggest you do is go to Pung Pui Farang, subscribe, and ask him the questions because he's got a lot more knowledge than I have. And the other person on my channel that I watch is Warren, which is Chazza, Jazza and Chanya. His link's below as well. You can give questions to them on the Lady Boys. Um, but yeah, Pung Pui Farang, it was a really good stream. Now, while I was in there, I met another creator, Big Fat bestie um it's got a a, a a growing channel um i think about a thousand subscribers i went and had a look at his channel and uh, he's got some really good videos there especially some of the later ones so if you get a chance i'll put a link below big fat bestie go and have a look at that one as well and um yeah very good so pung pui farang thank pung pui farang thanks for uh let me join in last night with the live stream. Enjoyed myself. <laughs> Learned some stuff. 
YouTube this morning sent me an email saying they demonetized one of my videos. I've had a quick look at it. It's nothing special. It didn't seem to break any rules or anything. So I don't know what that's all about. All about being new to YouTube, I'm going to have to go and investigate that. But if it's because I'm talking about bars and that sort of thing, I could end up all my videos being demonetized. So I'll keep you informed on that. Really not sure. There we go, that's it today. I've dropped this, I'm dropping this video in today. I did have some other ones lined up ready, but it just ties in with that uh, live stream last night. So you'll see this one before other ones. The numbers might get all mixed up. I have to sort that out, aren't I? Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you soon. Bye for now.